Hello everybody, my name is Jyoti Verma, working as Senior Software Engineer in Unica Support Group. In this video, we will understand campaign triggers. Basically, there are two types of triggers in Unica campaign called as inbound trigger and outbound trigger. Inbound trigger is nothing but just a message that is broadcast to other campaigns. We can configure flowcharts to listen for a trigger and start its execution. It can be used when you want to define one complete flow. For example, the execution of pre-opt flowchart, optimization, and then post-opt flowchart. Outbound triggers are batch or shell script that is executed when called by campaign. Inbound triggers are defined in schedule process box to initiate flowchart run, whereas outbound triggers can be defined in call list, mail list, or advanced option of the flowchart. Let's start. First, we will create and work with inbound trigger. For that, we need schedule process box. The schedule process box, select schedule to run option as custom run. Check the box of run on triggers and define any string of your choice. As unica underscore T and saving it. Now in order to execute the run of this flowchart, this is scheduled process box should start. So I am saving it. And starting. As you can see that after clicking on start, we can see the three dots. That means the schedule process box is now active. It is listening for the trigger. To broadcast the trigger, we need the utility called as unica underscore ACTRG. I am inside campaign bin directory. From here, we will call the script. This is a script that is used to broadcast the inbound triggers. Asterisk means broadcasting it to all the campaigns. We have the option to define a specific campaign or flowchart, but here I am using a star. That means it will be broadcasted to all the campaigns. And the trigger name. My trigger name is unique underscore T. We can see here trigger message delivered to listener process. That means this flowchart has now received the trigger and it will start its execution in some time. We can see the status is updated. We can see the check mark and the count as 10. That means inbound trigger have been in place. Now let's understand outbound trigger. So for outbound trigger, we have already created a script inside the partition location. So this is the script called as trig1.sh. Let's check the definition of it. This is it's a simple batch uh, batch script calling as hello world. It's just printing the hello world in some file called as hello.txt. Let me remove this file. It's removed. Now let's run the script. You 
it's run login chat. We can see this hello.txt is created again. That means this script is working fine. Let me again delete this file. It's not here. So what we have done now, we have just ran this utility from the command line. The same script will be called by the campaign when we define it as outbound trigger. Let's do that. Here we have the option of stored triggers. Here we can define new item. And trigger name I am you know, giving as uh, amp out trick. That means campaign outbound trigger. command we can simply give the command called as this or we can select from the browse option so click on browse click one dot sh open save so i have saved the definition we can we have the option to run this trigger from here for example first let's check okay that file is already not present Let's run trigger from here. OK, I have run the trigger from campaign. Let's check whether the file is created here. It's created. Let's configure it in our mail list. That means the trigger is successfully being executed from campaign. Let's configure it in mail list. In the mail list process, we have the option of called as send triggers. Here I am selecting camp out trigger that we have defined just now. OK, that schedule process box is still active. Let me first stop that schedule process. We don't need this schedule, so. What I can do. And minutes as two minutes So after two minutes. It will. Consider the execution as completed. That means that total active duration of the schedule process will be only two minutes. After two minutes, it will not be active. The main list. Let's define the outbound trigger. Saving the definition. There is one more option where we can define the outbound triggers. It's called as advanced settings. In the advanced settings, here we have the option send triggers on flowchart run error, send triggers on flowchart success. Here, all the list of triggers are coming. So if this flowchart executes successfully, then you can define the success trigger. Or if this flowchart fails, that means on run, uh, on run error, the, you can define another trigger. For now, I am not uh, selecting any trigger here because I have defined in the main list. Saving the flowchart. And starting it because we have the schedule process box on top, so we have to start it. We can see the status is updated here. Now let's first send the inbound trigger so that this flowchart executes.
OK, inbound trigger is sent. Let's check the status here. It's updated. The flowchart has been executed. That means it might have created hello.txt under partitions location because we can see mail, mail list have been executed. Yes, it has created again hello.txt. So that was all about inbound and outbound trigger. We can further check the details in flowchart log. Here we can see the schedule process box respond to trigger unique underscore T. That means it is responding to this inbound trigger. Then after schedule process box has completed its run. That process box here we can see the select process box. Select one is also completed. Select process run done and mail list have been started. Mail list process run start. In the mail list, we will also be able to see the execution of trigger. Here we can see trigger executing camp out trick trick one dot sh location. Mail list send trigger. And here we can see that mail list process run done. So that's how you check the activity of inbound and outbound triggers. Thanks for watching the video.